Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for being here. We're going to go ahead and it's 530 PM. So we're going to go ahead and start our meeting for this afternoon or evening. Um, we're going to begin with introductions. So I'm going to start to my left. Hello, everybody. My name is Sergio Martinez, and I work at uh, the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Good afternoon, all. Chester Gonzalez, attorney. Joe Medrano, uh, retired uh, community service nonprofit organizations. Trisha Cavazos, BISD. Bruce Marshall, BISD. Miguel Angel Patino, Laboratory Corporation of America. Brady Quesada, uh, BPUB PR and PubCap liaison. Okay, so we're going to add and move to approve the minutes. Hopefully, y'all were able to um, look over them from last month. So, if we can have a motion to approve, we only had one revision. It was on the highlighted line on the second page. Mm -hmm. The U.S. Okay. combined ownership at Amistad and Falcon stood at 23.3% of normal conservation capacity. Okay. Um, I motion. Okay. I second. Okay. Motion carries. Okay, uh, number three on the agenda, old business. So we took a PubCap picture yesterday. We were here. That's going to be used for our annual report. Um, we also, we, we remain in uh, drought stage two of our drought contingency plan. We have been uh, communicating with regularly, uh, not only through social media, we do have a website, a web page and our website dedicated to drought stage two restrictions and resources. Uh, we have uh, sent information via mail also, uh, billboards, and um, and also through a BPV Central video, very informational, uh, very informative, uh, that's already posted on YouTube, and also for um, internal communications is posted on our internet. Okay, let's move on to number four, new business. For new business, we actually have a couple things uh, Coming up, but uh, first and foremost, an update on the drought. Uh, we were at 23.3% last meeting. And as of uh, October 7th, we're at 21.3%. That was an update I received yesterday from Renee and from Gracia. So we remain in stage two. We're going to continue communicating um, this information to customers. Um, so uh, the other item is on uh, on Friday, we're having our electrical community tour. That's October 20th, this Friday. Um, I know we have a member of the, of, uh, of the community here with us. Feel free to sign up for our community tour. I think we're, we might be at capacity, but you never know. Some people might not make it on Friday. Um, and we'll be touring. We'll be talking about that a little bit more in one of the topics there today. Also, on October 30th and 31st, we have Boo at the Zoo. Uh, the PR team is seeking volunteers to volunteer for about two hours for October 30th and the 31st. We, what we end up doing is um, giving out candy to everybody who attends Boo at the Zoo. It's, it's really fun time and urge to wear a costume. Uh, what, what time is this from, Clayton? It's going to be... Six to nine. Okay. But the time. Five to nine. Okay. And is, is there going to be like a little booth for PUB or is that yes. where we'll be? Okay. We're going to have a little booth and we were just told we're going to be inside the events center at the booth. Zoo, so we won't be outside. Okay. We'll be able to dress a little bit more comfortably and um, you're on a volunteer basis for two hours okay. for either a Monday or Tuesday. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other item I have is our upcoming ribbon cutting for the Southmost 2MG Tower. 
Our new water tower uh, is uh, located between 30th Street and Southmost, and we're going to be hosting the ribbon cutting on November 7th. Tuesday, November 7th, invitations and save the dates have gone out to everybody. So uh, you should be receiving um, a mail invitation soon. And you're more than welcome to attend, of course. PopCap is invited. That's all I have for new business. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to number five on the agenda. Fiscal year 2024 approved budget. Hello, good afternoon. My name is George Van Hill and I am the finance manager here at PUB and I'm going to be presenting the, uh, the approved fiscal year 2024 O&M and capital budgets. And so just to give you a little bit of background, um, the budget season for us starts, uh, well, for the finance team, we really start at the end of April, early May, doing some prep work for the uh, cycle. Uh, and that all begins uh, with staff updating worksheets for the, prior, uh, for the coming year, uh, updating the program that is used internally for the different departments to submit their O&M and capital requests. Um, if there was any uh, salary changes, which in this year there was, we did have a, um, uh, an adjustment to several of the salaries after a study was completed. Uh, that needs to get incorporated into the system as well. Uh, we also had a restructuring this year where uh, directors and managers were moved around uh, just to address different needs. Uh, and so that feeds a lot of our data. And so we needed to make sure that all of that gets updated prior to the development of the budget so that every, all the information is pointing to the correct uh, aligning departments, right? And so then we actually have our kickoff that starts uh, usually the week of Memorial, Memorial Day weekend, I mean, Memorial Day week. Uh, we send out instructions to the departments uh, on how they're gonna be able to submit their O&M and capital budgets. Uh, we set timelines for them to make sure that we are on time, we have set up with our managers, directors, uh, our finance committee, um, our board and our executive team. And all of that culminates into the presentation of the final plan for fiscal year 24 at the September board meeting. And that needs to be approved before October 1st, because October 1st is when we start our fiscal year. And so our budget needs to be ready to go by the start of October 1. So just to give you a little bit of a, a timeline on that. Uh, as part of my presentation, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and provide an overview of the approved fiscal year 24 sources of funds, uh, the fiscal year 24 approved use of, use of those funds, uh, the utility summary and revenue and expenses, and then the approved fiscal year 2024 capital spending plan. So we'll start off with our sources of funds. And basically, this is the, the projections of the revenues that BPUB anticipates to generate for fiscal year 2024. Uh, and for fiscal year 24, we are anticipating about 260 million uh, there on top. And that's really broken up into three different categories. We have our base rate revenues, uh, which are the revenues that are coming in from each of our uh, three utilities, our electric water and wastewater sales. Uh, then we have our fuel. Uh, and then we have a category named other, and that's really um, our non-operating revenues, our interest revenues, um, and then, yeah, sorry. our pool rental, security lights, connections and service charges, and penalties and late fees. And so I'm going to go ahead and start off with the biggest uh, chunk that you see there in the pie chart, and that is our electric sales and services. Uh, BPUB is anticipating of 171,949,448 uh, to be generated from electric sales. Uh, and there is a little breakdown chart on the side that shows uh, how that's being broken up between the base rates, uh, the fuel, and then off-system sales. Um, our off-system sales is when BPUB produces more energy than is needed for our own load. And so we have an opportunity to that into the open market. We're anticipating about $15 million in sales uh, in that excess generation. Um, moving on to the next slides, we have our water sales and services. Uh, one of the assumptions that we did take into account this year is that there were, there, there were some rate adjustments that were approved by the city last year. And so we are anticipating a 6% increase uh, that's about to take effect in January 1st. And so sales for, for the coming year are anticipated at around 31646557 uh, The Risaka fee, uh, we are scheduled, the, the approved rates that were scheduled for the Risaka fee were to increase uh, to $10 on January 1st. 
but uh, our board of directors, along with the city commission, uh, have agreed to hold off on that. So for right now, we are going to keep the current rate that we are charging customers, which is 625. Uh, we haven't decided what's going to happen in the future. There's going to be meetings between PUB and the city commission to determine if and when that rate does go up. Uh, but for now, we are going to leave that at 625. So when we made our budget uh, projections, the figure that we're going by, the, the 625 fee that we're currently charging. Uh, moving on to the next slice of the pie, we have our, our wastewater sales and services. Similar to water sales, um, wastewater is anticipating a 9% increase, also to be taking effect January 1st, 2024. So that is uh, being uh, calculated as part of the sales generated for the next coming year. Uh, then we have our other revenues and non-operating, uh, not other non-operating revenues. And like I mentioned before, those are our penalties and late fees, poll rental security lights and connection and service charges. Uh, the way we calculate this is we use a five-year average. And so basically each category, we went back for five years, took an average of that, and then used that as our projections going forward. Uh, and then lastly, we have our interest revenue, which is expected to come at about $6 million. Uh, we do have a department that um, deals with all of our uh, investments. And so because of uh, high yields uh, and high interest rates, uh, our current investments are, are looking at coming in at about $6 million for the year. Uh, any questions on the projected revenues? Okay, I'll go ahead and move on to the next slide. So now that we have our projected revenues, now we can know how we're going to spend those revenues. And so you'll see that exact same number, that 259 million 510105. And so similarly to the projections, uh, once we have those outlined, uh, we do have several different categories that are split up on how we're going to spend those, uh, spend those revenues that are generated. And again, I'll start off with the, uh, the largest pie at the top. Uh, you see there we have our electric fuel and energy costs of 85 million 720 uh 85 million 720 thousand and that is the cost that it that it that pub incurs to generate the electricity for their customers and so one thing about that is that when pu whatever bpub incurs of cost that is passed down to the customer uh so in the previous slide you saw that that was a revenue that's the revenue that we're anticipating from the customers to offset the 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 expense that bpub incurs to generate the electricity Moving on to the next piece of the pie, we have our electric fuel and energy costs for our off system sales. In the previous slide, I did mention that we are anticipating $15 million in that excess, excess generation that I mentioned. And so that also has a cost to that as well, right? We're anticipating $15 million uh, in sales, but we're also anticipating $9 million in expenses to create that, that, that excess generation to, to be able to sell that into the market. And so we're looking, um, we're looking at that offset for the $15 million. The next slice of the pie is our contributions to the South Moth Regional Water Authority. Uh, BPUB is a participant uh, to that entity, and we are uh, committed at our allocated percentage uh, to contribute to their O&M and capital budgets. And so our, our, um, our allocation for the fiscal year 24 is 7,257,738. Moving on to our personnel and uh, O&M expenses, we are anticipating costs of 54,207,694. Uh, that is... There is a there is a significant increase over last year. I believe last year we were at forty eight, and like I said, we did have um, a salary study done across the board um, earlier this year uh, to take into account the um, the industry standards. So we what we what HR um, saw during the study was that our midpoints to several of our to several of our positions were way below market level. So the point of the study was to get everybody up to market level and then account for uh, the years of service that somebody has in a certain position. So depending on how many years you had in your position, there was an extra, there was an extra amount that was added onto your salary to be able to account for those years of service that you have with us. Because we don't want to just have you at the minimum. We want to make sure that we also account the years of service that you have with us. Uh, I'm not familiar with which, uh, but it's, it's with the other utilities of similar size and an organization. Yeah. And so they went out and they surveyed several different companies uh, and took averages from those uh, from those same positions. Um, and so, yeah, so, so then we did have that that big increase over last year due to that study. Uh, moving on to our non personnel on M expenses, uh, those are coming in at 44 million 855. 523. Uh, that is pretty much in line with last year's uh, approved budget of 43 million. Uh, so it's about a, about a million five over last year's approved budget. 
Uh, and that's just due to escalation in, in, in costs, as you all may know, everybody's experiencing an increase in costs for, for all commodities. And so that, that's the, uh, the amounts that we're forecasting for this coming year. Uh, at the bottom, you'll see the Risaka maintenance O&M uh, Risaka fee funded. So currently, the, our, our Risaka maintenance department is uh, receiving funding uh, for their O&M expenses. Uh, and that is through a grant that is uh, funded through the TCEQ. And so for the coming year, um, the Risaka department is, is anticipating, you'll see the, the footnote there at the bottom, is anticipating about $5.44 million uh, in, in O&M expenses, of which $9 million is going to be funded by that grant that I just mentioned. And then the remaining $2.66 uh, $2 is going to be funded through the Risaka fees that are currently being collected by the customers. Um, of the... Of the, of, the, of the amount remaining, the 266, uh, 1.09 is um, our 35% cost share for contract one uh, for the work with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, BPUB also submitted a, um, is requesting a, uh, an earmark from Congressman uh, Vicente Gonzalez. He has submitted on our behalf a project to be able to do work with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers uh, to uh, fund their portion of contract one uh, for a project that we have out for our Risacas. And so that is going to be funded through, um, well, hopefully through the appropriations uh, once that gets approved um, moving forward. And then 1.57 million of the remaining Risaca maintenance o &M expenses are going to be covered by the restored grant. Uh, then we have other non-operating expenses of 1.1 million. Uh, and then we have our debt service fund of 28 million 884 265. Uh, our debt service fund is our payments that we give for all of our outstanding debt uh, for all of our capital projects. Uh, and then we have our um, city usage. So um, the city is entitled to 10% of our adjusted gross revenues uh, minus their usage. So whatever the amount is that they're anticipated they are going to get based off our adjusted gross revenues. 10% uh, goes to the city, but after we subtract out whatever the usage is in electricity, water, and wastewater. And so that is their usage that is anticipated for fiscal year 2024, the 6,015,910. And that's why you'll see that as a negative. Uh, the, the anticipated city gross transfer is, into, uh, is coming in at 15,753,238. And then we do have some Risaka CIP funding, so that is going to be Risaka related capital projects uh, that are going to come in at a million seven. 1552 have our regular CIP funding for all of our remaining capital projects under the electric water and wastewater utilities uh, at 15 million 18,773. Uh, any question on any of the expenses that we have? Um, I was going to ask you, can you elaborate a little bit on the Risaka maintenance? So what is that going to entail? Because I know that I've heard different things about people who are Risaka, you know, or land owners that have a Risaka. Like, what is that going to entail exactly? The Risaka project or the maintenance. So our Risaka maintenance department uh, has our O&M expenses, which are our personnel uh, and then just uh, materials and supplies that are going to be used uh, to sustain the operations of that department. And that includes like dredging, uh, that includes um, uh, removing of silt and debris out at the Risakas. And so all of those expenditures for the day to day operations is what's going to be included as part of their O&M. I don't know if that answered your question or. I live on a Rosaka, but our. Oh, okay. Our, this... I, it's kind of bad. Yeah. I've got kind a of bad. Sure. I've got a question regarding the the one of the previous slides, and you don't need to go back to oh. it, but you talked about a, a six twenty five fee that was uh, proposed to ten dollars, which has been tabled. Sure. Mm -hmm. Tabled for how long, and and where did where was that ten dollars originated from? And what is the timeline to go back to that discussion? So um, back in May of 2022, uh, the BPUB went to the city commission and said, these are Risaka rates that we are looking to implement based on a, um, based on a uh, study that we did uh, for the Risaka maintenance program that we have overall. And so once that went, on, went, went into effect, uh, they were scheduled to go in every June. Uh, I'm sorry, the first, the first one went into effect June of 2022, and then subsequent increases were going to be implemented January 1st for the next. For 
next five years. This year, we were, we were anticipating to be at the $10 come January 1st of 2024. Uh, but because there's been a lot of discussion with the Rosaka fee uh, and the project itself, uh, PUB felt that maybe it was best to table that until further discussions are had with the city commission and make a final determination on how that's going to be addressed. Uh, I know that there is discussions currently underway with the city, uh, but I don't actually have a timeline as to when we're going to know for sure uh, if that 10 is going to be, you know, executed on the 1st or, or not. Uh, but for now, it's the plan is that it's not going to happen. I don't know, Mike, if you have additional. Yeah, so, so good evening, uh, Mike Perez. I'm the uh, chief financial officer. And so just uh, just to add to, to what George has, uh, has mentioned and to, to answer your question, uh, we hired an independent engineering consulting firm a couple of years back, Golden Financial Services, to conduct the uh, the water, wastewater, and Rizaka fee uh, study, right? And so we went ahead and provided measures uh, associated with the two grants that were mentioned. Uh, under the restore grant, uh, those are TCEQ funded uh, uh, funds that, that we got from the uh, Horizon oil oil spill. And then the uh, the other portion of the grant is the United States Army Corps of Engineers. And so they came up with a plan, 16 different contracts to dredge uh, the two largest resacas in Brownsville, Resaca de la Guerra, Resaca Rancho Viejo. Uh, initially, back uh, when the study was conducted, the those initial costs came in at about $211 million, you know, and it was a 65-35 share between federal and local. Those costs have, have since escalated uh, to three hundred and eleven million dollars. And so you know that that's how the, uh, the 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 rates were developed by the consultant based on the cost over the sixteen year contract. And so what we're seeing now is that we're we've been accumulating funds since we initiated the uh, the fee. We haven't had the federal funds yet appropriated for the program. And so there's there's fear from from the commission and the board that you know we don't want to be accumulating funds until such time that the appropriations are are in place. And so that's why the discussions came in that uh, they're probably they're going to want to cap it at six twenty five going forward until such time that the appropriations come in and then they'll reevaluate re uh, going uh, higher. So does that answer your question? Thank you. Thank you, Thank Mr. Perez. Any other questions on the expense side? Now we'll move on to our utility fund summary. So this is basically uh, our flow of funds that we call uh, that shows our revenues and expenses uh, and how that flows into our financial statements. And so I'm going to start off. Well, I'm going to concentrate on column L, which is the right hand column. Uh, the furthest right hand column labeled combined fiscal year 2024 uh, highlighted in yellow. Uh, our net operating revenue is scheduled to come in at $238,047,586. Uh, we add into that interest from investments uh, and other revenues, and that gives us gross revenues of 259510105 which are the numbers that I provided previously in both slides. Uh, to that, we're going to subtract out our fuel and energy costs, our all system sales, and our contribution uh, to SRWA, which gives us the adjusted gross revenues of $157,532,367. Uh, that is a number that we use to as a calculation for the 10% uh, to the city. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and subtract out our O&M expenses of 102, 102,820,450. Gives us the balance available for debt service and other legal purposes of 54,711,918. Uh, to that, we're going to subtract out our debt service payments of 28,884,265. Gives us the balance available after debt service of 25,827,653. Uh, and then from there, we're going to subtract the uh, COB. For, uh, that number is going to be on line number 16. You'll see the 15,753,236, which is the 10% of line item number seven. And then uh, we're going to subtract out their usage of the 6,015,910. Uh, so their cash transfer is going to be 9,737,328. Uh, so that's going to give us a balance available to surplus for transfers out of 16,090,325. And that is the amount that we used for our uh, capital uh, improvement projects. Uh, you'll see that that's coming in at 15018773 plus the capital improvement project for the Resaca uh, of 1071552 totaling the 16090325 uh, And then you'll see there that we have a debt service coverage ratio of 1.89. 
uh, that is the um, the amount of if you scroll onto the page that is the the uh, balance available for debt service and other legal purposes uh, divided by our debt service. And so covenants that uh, dictate that we need to have a minimum of 1.25 coverage. And so in this case, we are way above that 1.25 uh, that's needed. So we meet that. Uh, any questions on the, the fund summaries that I just went over? Okay. And then lastly, I'm going to go over our capital improvement plan. Uh, for fiscal year 2024, uh, the board did approve uh, a plan of 91,717,365. Uh, that is about a 0.45 increase, uh, decrease over last year's, uh, which was at 92,133,995. Uh, and we do show this here uh, through, um, through the different utilities. So we have our electric, our general and administration, water and wastewater. Uh, and you do see a five-year total going forward uh, to kind of give a better accurate picture of what our CRP plan is going uh, for the next five years. Uh, several of the projects that we have lined up are going to be major overhaul to our infrastructure. Uh, we do have some major rehabilitations to our plan. Uh, we, um, uh, we are including in here uh, our AMI project, which Eddie will talk about later. Uh, so that is going to be something that comes in for our electric and water uh, customers. Uh, we do have another uh, grant related project that we are working with the city of Brownsville to update our water and wastewater infrastructure out of the downtown area. So that's about another $15 million that's on here. Uh, and then we have a lot of other uh, projects related to, um, uh, I guess, the the upgrades to um, to some of our software and, and other uh, facilities throughout BPUB. Um, one of the things that did, that we did do differently this year, because this is something that the board heavily tracks uh, on a regular basis, and we do present this uh, during our finance committee, usually on a quarterly basis. And it's one of the things that we usually struggle with is trying to uh, spend a lot of the money that we get approved, right? Uh, so this year, one of the things that we did differently was kind of uh, look at the look at each uh, project and identify what phase uh, of the life of that project it's currently in. Is, is it in design? Uh, is it being uh, you know engineered? Is it being contracted out? Is it being bid out? Uh, and so that will kind of give us a better understanding as to why it is or isn't moving as fast as maybe other projects. And one of the things that we have to tell uh, uh, that we have to um, show our board on a quarterly basis is versus what was approved, what what is being expensed and why, right? And we have to give them an explanation as to why something's getting spent uh, at a slower pace than maybe another project is. And so we felt that by attaching this addi additional identification to the projects, we can kind of better understand as why they're not moving faster or slower than other projects. And so I'll give you an example. Uh, we do have a lot of projects where we're kind of uh, working either with the city or other organizations uh, where we can't really move until they decide to move forward with the project on their end. Uh, a lot of our projects are contingent on the, the city maybe re um, breaking so that we can get access to our infrastructure that's located under those roads, right? Because if we, if, we, if we did that work and the city did that work, we'd have construction nonstop throughout the city. And we know that we don't want that for our citizens. And so we need to make sure that we are coordinating, you know, our best efforts with, with the city and the other organizations to make sure that our projects align uh, when it's most feasible uh, for everybody involved. And so those are some of the things that kind of hold us back. And so these projects are contingent on outside factors. And so when we present to our board on that quarterly basis, we want to make sure that we convey that information to them. Uh, and that's that's all I have on the capital uh, improvement side. I don't know if you all have any questions on that. I do have a question. Yes, ma'am. On your um, five-year capital improvement plan under general administration, year 27-28, why do we have a blank? So um, usually with our general administration, a, a lot of these going forward, we try to use our best guess as to happen in the next two to three years. And usually with general administration, there's really not a lot that can go into that particular category. Like, for example, with electric, we have our power plant. Uh, we have a lot of electric facilities that we know we can maintain. Uh, same thing for the water and wastewater. But for general and administration, I mean, with the, with the addition of the 511 building out on uh, uh, 511, and then the addition of this building, there's really not a lot of um, upgrades that we can do, especially when we have these brand new facilities. Uh, things can change next year, and maybe we decide to do something different. Uh, but for now, based on our, you know, on our best guess estimates, that's what we that's what we show going forward. 
Thank you. Not a problem. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Um, could we also be provided a list of those CIP projects? Yeah, definitely. We can we can provide them. Yeah, just out of wanted to review them. Sure, not a problem. We have about a, a little over 250 projects, but definitely we have a list of that and small descriptions for each one. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions on CIP? Thank you so much for your presentation. So that includes my presentation. So no other questions. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to uh, the agenda item six, public power month. All right, so Public Power Month is in October, and we have a few outreach activities and some information we put out to our customers. Mm -hmm. Public Power Week is held the first full week of October. It's meant to help MOUs like BPB to better connect with customers. The intent is to give customers greater understanding of public power, what it is, and how it benefits our customers. And BPB a week to a celebration um, in years past we used to even hand out leds at heb unfortunately this is the first year heb decided not to host that anymore because now you have to buy leds they don't sell anything else in the stores besides leds mm -hmm. so uh this is all from the pr perspective uh we've done a, a ton of advertising uh we have a special edition of, um of it's called a Spadia, what you're looking at, and it's a special edition of the Brownsville Herald. Uh, we provide that to our customers with a schedule of, e of events that we have throughout the month and with a lot of new information. Every year, this information is updated to fit the year, really. Uh, I remember in, um, during COVID, we, we made everything fit to the theme of the year. This time we had some information there regarding the Tenasca Equity Fund, just reiterating the and putting out. People did receive their refunds. We have been receiving some checks back. So if you know of anybody who still hasn't received a check and maybe they are supposed to be receiving one, um, maybe they changed their address, maybe they changed their information, they can reach out to our BPB customer service department and see if they have a check that someone returned. Um, so we put that information out also. Uh, we have a coloring section, a kid's corner there for kids to have them understand what, you know, playing around around electrical power does. Um, Leo the lineman, for those of you who are new to our panel, our Leo the lineman is our uh, unofficial mascot for BPUB. He goes out, his name's Joe Rodriguez, and uh, he works in the metering department and he goes out periodically throughout the year and does presentations to students or even to adults. And he has a, um, a really nice looking uh, equipment that shows kids if you get near electrical lines, you'll get electrocuted, et cetera. So uh, maybe we can have uh, Leo the lineman come over one day and, and show you what the presentation does. But this goes hand in hand with that. Um, that's our kids corner. And at the very bottom, we mentioned eSmart Kids. That is our designated website for kids. BPUB has a website for kids to learn more about electrical safety and um, things they could do at home to conserve energy. It also has a, a designated area for teachers. So teachers can use that website to teach their kids or give them activities. Um, so they can teach them about electrical safety. It's, it's really fun and interactive. It's, it has a lot of fun games. So throughout our, uh, on our social media, we've been um, communicating information regarding the importance of public power and all the benefits for our customers. Uh, we post more so now than we did before, and, and it's really good. We get a lot more interaction from our customers, so feel free at any time to share those posts with your um, with your community, your Facebook community, um, you know, to spread the word a little bit more. And we also do it in English and Spanish in case you're curious. All, all of our communications are always in English and Spanish. So
So then our biggest event throughout the month is our community tour. Uh, we work really hard to put this together. Uh, I know that um, I'm just going to mention this because it, it's in my head right now. It's one of the projects that I think uh, that's part of the O&M is uh, re rehabilitating a little bit of Silas Ray. It is a very antique building. And a lot of the rehabilitation is, I'm sure, is going to happen throughout the building inside and out. So you'll be able to see that um, area this time around. So you're encouraged if you haven't applied, if you haven't, uh, sorry, um, for the tour, I'm sure we we might still have some room for you so you can tour the plant and see uh, how BPUB basically distributes electrical power to customers. Fall community tour is scheduled this Friday, October 20th, open to the public. And we do mean the public. It could be non-customers who join the, the tour. Our max capacity is always at 20, uh, 25 people. We do have 25 people signed up, so we're hoping that everyone shows up. Participants will see the Silas Ray power plant, which is the one there on the picture. The Rio Grande substation, it's uh, one of the newer substations we have. Uh, they're going to see a demonstration by our electrical linemen. They're going to show them how, how they climb the electrical pole, how they would rescue somebody from the electrical pole. It's, it's a real neat presentation. And they show them their PPE also. Uh, and then we'll have a presentation from the so that basically wraps up our month uh, we have a lot of activities online and and the biggest one is our tour do you have any questions for me i do have a question actually too uh can we have the inform um the contact information for joe rodriguez definitely and also the website for the teachers uh, sure i want to share it um, among the ISD, that would be a very, very important uh, site that we can go to. I'm glad you asked. Yes, I'll share that with you. Thank you. And I want to applaud your social media campaign because I, I get those on social media and I push those forward as soon as I run across one. I did want to ask about the, you, you said the checks that are returned, if we know of anyone, uh, and this may be something that I missed, but is there an ongoing campaign to just kind of to to bring that back up to the community that uh, if if they receive a check that they were unable to cash that I don't know if there's a way or if there's a contact person or just kind of a reminder you know so that sure. as that fades out it fades out but there's information also going out as opposed to just well if they come in we can we can work with them i know that our customer service department has been receiving and since we since they distribute the checks have still been receiving people come in um uh, so i would have a better answer for you once i talk to eddie campirano uh, the manager of the department just to see where we're at with that and see maybe how many checks we've received since then um we haven't posted something new recently uh just reminding customers of the tef but we we would definitely do that i uh, we could definitely post something on social media, just reminding customers about that. The last thing I saw was uh, a feature on the web page that allowed them to put their address and it would come up. I, I don't know if there's somebody here from customer service, um, but th I think that's the last feature I saw where they could go in and put their name or, or their address and information would come up. Yes, it's on the regular website. Yes, uh, but when, and we also have messaging on the bill I know they've added some messaging on there as well throughout the year. I can definitely revisit that and see what the status of, of it all is with customer service. But that's a really good point. Thank you. Any other questions? Great Thank presentation. You. Thank you. Thank you so much, Clinton. Okay, so we're gonna move on on the agenda to number seven, AMI update.
Good afternoon. My name is Eddie Hernandez. Uh, I'm the director of enterprise solutions for PUB. And let's see if I can find. Uh... Hmm. Um, P... let's see. So I guess to start off, what is AMI? A AMI stands for advanced metering infrastructure. And really what it means is smart metering. Uh, so you, you're probably more familiar with that term. Yeah. Uh, so at, at its most basic level, the, uh, we would replace the current meters. Uh, we would replace the current electric meters and we would augment the, the water meters that we have. And they would be able to transmit signals. So uh, we set up like a little, it, it, it's like a little communications network. And those signals come back. Uh, the neat thing about that is, okay, then we don't have to go out and read your your meter anymore. That data is coming back to us. It's also at a much more refined level. Uh, on the electric side, we can get interval, you know, they call it interval reads every 15 minutes. Um, so in that way, we can kind of start to see what your consumption patterns are. Uh, and on the water side, uh, I, I believe we're going to do it every 15 minutes also, either 15 minutes or an hour, I forget which. But the neat thing about that is, okay, now you can do something with that data. Um, a lot of times, I, I know I used to be in, in charge of customer service, and every May, June, like like clockwork, summer comes, the bill shoots up, people forget that it's you got used to the lower bills, you know, over the spring, and they come in and they go, you explain to me why my bill jumped a hundred dollars because I haven't changed anything, okay? I used to be my, I I hate. <laughs> and we couldn't say anything because really it's like, well, I mean, we don't know, but it's it's based on consumption, right? We read the meter and we give you the read. We had one reader, one read at the beginning of the month and one read 30 days later. That's it. That's all we know. We don't know what you did at home. We don't know who, whether the family came over or it was the weather or a water leak or whatever else. Um, with With the interval data, we're able to pull that into the system display it on our website for our customers. We'll have a customer engagement portal so that you can log in and take a look at, you can you can see it if, if you want to, and I'm sure a lot of people will the first couple of months and then forget about it, but it's there, you know, but you can also set up warnings, kind of like your, your different, the different accounts you have. Um, you can set up little warnings so that if you exceed a certain limit, let me know. So it'll send you a text. We can also set up warnings uh, for things like water leaks. Right now it's, it, Especially with all the hot weather we have, you know how the ground shifts. I mean, I live in Brownsville Country Club and it's all clay. So, I mean, we got cracks everywhere. And well, that also affects our water lines. It breaks the lines, things happen in your yard. And it's horrible when you have had a leak for two or three uh, days and you, you, you finally go in the backyard to go clean something. And there it is. And oh my God. And you're thinking of my water bill, you know, because it charges you water and sewer. So with these kinds of things, we can set up alerts so that it'll it'll let you know ahead of time. So really, the whole thing about AMI is, is it's setting up a communications network. A lot of times people look at meter reading, but that's really just the it's AMI is a foundation of a communications network. And then you layer things on top of it. Uh, we It's also really good for outage management um, during storms and such. We can we can see we can look at the system and because we're communicating with the meters. Now we can see, OK, where are the outages happening? Um, a good example is I went to visit, uh, Brian, Texas, BTU, Brian, Texas utilities a couple years ago for a different system that we were purchasing that they happened to have. And, uh, we spent the day there to review the system and that was nice. And I happened to know the, the, uh, the CIO over there, the head, the head IT guy. And, um, afterwards we were talking and said, Hey, you've got this, this, uh, software that that we just purchased how do you like it this this different software that communicates with your customers and he goes oh we like it pretty good you know we use it for i forget what he, what they use it for i said well you, you, don't you use it for like outage management you know to, to communicate with your customers and he just kind of looked at me funny and he just laughed he goes eddie we have ami our customers don't call us and i looked at him i, I was like oh. the issue was he goes we know that they're out of power before they know that they're out of power and we communicate with them. So hopefully, once everything's installed, the way it would work is you're at work during the day, right? You're busy. You're doing stuff. If you have an outage, we would send you a text and let you know, hey, we're aware that there was an outage in your neighborhood. 
we're working, we're sending a crew out to take a look. We'll get back to you when, when things are, uh, when, we, when we know what's going on. Mm -hmm. You get the second text later on that says, it's a transformer. Your outage, we're estimating that your outage is going to be about two or three hours. Well, then now you can plan. And that's, that's the big thing is you can look and say, okay, well, what am I going to do with the kids? Because I'm going to go pick them up from school and no power for three hours. That's, that's no good because everything's electronic. You know, they can't do homework. They, they can't watch TV. They can't play their everything. Um, so you can start to plan, uh, or, you know, what am I going to do? Or how I'm gonna, and people are usually okay with that as long as they know. It's when you get home and it's all, oh, and then you find out that there's no, because we don't have that, that knowledge. The third text would then be, okay, your, your power should be restored. If it's not, then please call us because it's something else. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of thing that, that we can do. And on a larger scale, when we have freezes or, uh, or, or hurricanes, you know, it helps us with the restoration because we can look at the system and see what's on and what's off with some confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, right now, we really depend on the customer calling in. We have the PUB app that you all can put information in or phone calls. And that's what we rely on. And, and from that, we kind of extrapolate and we kind of, we kind of sort of know what's going on. With this, it'll be much more uh, granular because you'll, you'll, you're, you're in touch with every single meter. We have about 55,000 electric meters and about 58,000 water meters. So those meters are, are talking to us and letting us know. Um, so that's kind of the, that's, that's a, a real big overview of the system. Um, the electric meters, yes, we will have to replace them. The water meters, I believe, uh, we're sticking with the same water meter. So we're only going to have to replace about 18,000. However, there's a little module that goes on top of the meter and the radio comes out. Those were going to all 57,000. So we're still going to need some, okay, because uh, the systems aren't perfect. They, they do break down. So we'll need a handful to do you know, to do some things, uh, but those positions, what we're, what, we're, what we're starting to do is kind of phase them out. So when somebody leaves, we hire a temporary. So right now I've got about four or five temps working for me because I didn't, I didn't want to hire a full-time meter reader knowing that in two years that job goes away. So what we've done is hire temps at, you know, through attrition and, uh, uh, you know, and then we'll 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 probably retrain or, or some may turn into technicians because then I, somebody's going to have to work on the communications on that meter when it goes bad. So we'll look for other positions in the company where we can hopefully transition them to. But there, there's yeah. <laughs> In the garage. Yeah. That's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you bought an energy efficient fridge and what'd you do with the old one? Well, it's in the garage with full of beer. <laughs> okay. In the hottest, in the hottest room, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Yeah. So you'll be able, we can show you, and, and by the same token, we can all, we can, we'll also be able to do things like look at it and see. Um, we can see that on, on the 20, around the 20th of November, your, your bill jumped for three or four days. So, you know, what happened or did anything? Oh, well, that's when the in-laws came or the, the kids came from college or something. Cause you can see the, the spikes. You'll, you'll have that, that data. Is that on the web? Is that on a website? Did I hear you say that? Or, or I, I guess what I was, what I'm saying this is, is, is there, and I know you've said there's a PUB app, but is, is something like the uh, the ability for a customer because I like what you said about well if you you know there's a limit and I think we all more or less have a budget for what our electricity might be whatever it is whatever that number is and I I appreciate how you compared that to your bank account because you know many of us are looking at well how how much do I have for the rest of the month but if there was a, is is that app accessible or is that it will be okay yeah that that was because that would that for the consumer i mean i i realize it's not going to happen tomorrow but i think that at some point if if somebody you know could look and say well what, wait a minute 
my my electricity is going up considerably here um, based on consumption, obviously. Uh, I, I'll, I'll manage better so that I can stay within a range mm -hmm. and not be surprised by a bill that I get. I think that, so that's, I, I'm just thinking out loud, I guess. Yeah, and, when, and when, what would that be on, whether that would be on an app or not? Yeah, um, that's the goal. So part of what we did was the system itself, it, it, it really is about three or four different systems that come together because uh, you have the electrical head end. That's the, the system that communicates with the electric meters and collects that data. You have the water head end that collects that data from, from, uh, from the water meters, okay? Then that information is transmitted to what we call a meter data management system, which is like, just think of it as a giant data warehouse. And that's, that system passes all the other PUB systems that we have in place, like the billing system. The billing system doesn't need all that interval data. Stop and think about it. Right now, the billing system gets two pieces of data, the beginning of the month and the end of the month, and it subtracts and gets the difference. That's all I need to bill. I don't want. Think about it. If, if you, that, that's four reads an hour times 24 hours a day times 30 days in a month. That's a lot of data. It doesn't need that. So the meter data management system gives the different, if, if you all are different computer systems, the data warehouse parses out, okay, what do you need? And it gives that data to you. One of the new systems that we're going to purchase is the customer engagement portal. Uh, actually, the board approved the purchase of that system in, I, I believe, around January or February. Um, so the customer engagement portal is meant to take a lot of that information, basically, that would be of interest to the customer, like the graphs that show my consumption, and I can zoom in and take a look and see what happened, and all, all the data, and my billing data. It, it's meant to be like a central location where the customer can go and anything that you need that's PUB uh, as far as your bill, uh, your banking with us, your, your payment of bills, every, everything will be in there. So that, that's the goal, uh, eventually to, to get to that point. And then we can send out messaging, like I was, like, as I was saying, alerts to let you know that, hey, you asked us to let you know that when your estimate, because obviously it's an estimate, when, when your bill is getting beyond a certain level. So you may get, you can set it up. Um, my understanding is you can set these things up to where they, uh, they can give you alerts based on consumption or based on dollars if, if you want estimates. So, mm -hmm. they, they do have alerts and, and the meters themselves have little widgets in them that, that will tell you if, if they've been moved or they've been pulled out of the socket. Uh, right now, again, it, it, it's sometimes we know, sometimes we don't. And it'll be a lot more. One of the main things that I tell people is this whole system, it changes the entire dynamic, okay? Um, right now, we're, we're reactive. Like I tell you, we go at the end of the month, we get the read, and then we compare and we send you a bill, right? Uh, same thing. If there's an outage, what did I tell you all? I'm, I'm, I'm depending on you to tell me, really. You call me and say, hey, I don't have power, or you put it in the app or something. We're, we're dependent. We're very reactive in almost everything we do. And that's the way the industry was for, for 100 years. What this allows us to do is to be a little more proactive. Like I said, I've been talking about this type of technology for 10 years. And when I went to see my friend and, 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 and Brian, and he said, hey, we have AMI. We know before they know. I was like, oh, Minso, you know, <laughs> uh, because it's true. We now know. We're, it's more likely that we're going to. So what happened to their phone call volume? It dropped. Like, he goes, we don't get phone calls anymore. I'm like, are you kidding? He goes, no, we don't. Just about a year, and then the phone volume just dropped like a rock because the majority of things, they now have all high bills. They know. They can jump online and take a look. Outages, we text them. We let them know. You know, so a lot of, it, it changes the entire dynamic. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really, that's, that's one of the most important things of this whole thing. And it allows us to kind of perform kind of more like you're used to with your other apps and your other uh, utilities. You know, so. Now, getting back to the presentation, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll run through these really quick. I didn't want to, I, yeah. <laughs> um, 
This is an alignment. We try to align most of our projects with our strategic plan. Every five years, we do an overall strategic plan. I'm sure a lot of you guys do also in, in your uh, in your companies. So this, uh, you can see what the vision was, the mission, and then we had our issues and goals. And actually, AMI touched almost every single issue or goal for engagement, uh, workforce development, organizational preparedness, and, and resili resiliency, process improvement, um, et cetera, et cetera, technology and innovation. So it, it really touched almost everything. And, and I will tell you that there's been a lot of work. It, it, it's not just a technological thing. The customer service group, the engineering group, the water group, uh, marketing, uh, uh, customer service in a big way. So obviously it affects every customer service process. All of our processes are changing the way we, like I was just telling you, okay, it, it, it changes the whole. So we had to rethink everything. Mm -hmm. um, and the teams have been, the employees have really been involved. We've had about 30 or 40 employees on, on these teams. And uh, we've been doing a lot of upfront work to document all those process changes and what the new process is going to look like. And I just tell them, okay, look, you know, don't let don't let perfection get in the way of better, you know, because everybody get panics and oh, got no, 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 try it, try it, and we'll we'll fix it as we go along, you know, um, we'll do our best, and then we'll we adapt. Um, so it's it, it's been a, it's it's really been a company wide effort, uh, and and I, I really appreciate all the work that everybody's put into it. But it, I wanted to show you how it kind of ties back to our strategic plan, and where are we in the process? Uh, we just we're in the process of finishing the vendor contracting, uh, so we're we're getting close to kickoff. Uh, we did get the con approval contract uh, by the board of directors, so now all the contracts have gone back to the vendors. They will sign them, submit them, and then we sign them, and then off we go. So we're we're at that last step now, uh, project kickoff. So hopefully by by the end of this month, we'll we'll be, we'll we'll actually get the wheels to start moving. It'll be, and uh, I'll show you the timeline in a little bit, but it'll be about a three year project. Now, what is the system comprised of? We have, we're this whole million dollar project, and we're, uh, we have uh, four different major vendors that we're, that we're working with Landis and Gears providing the electrical meters, the grid stream, grid stream mesh network, that's the communications network, and the command head end center. That's the system that gets all the read that, that, receives all the reads uh, on the electric side. Badger is the water company. Uh, we've been dealing with Badger for decades. Um, they provide the water meters and the Orion LTE cellular communication. The electrical system is a, a radio a RF network. Badger is a cellular network. So it, they're two different communication networks. And the water system also has the beacon head end system. Then there's SmartWorks. SmartWorks is going to uh, provide the meter data management system. That's the data warehouse I was telling you about uh, for the electric and water. So both he each head end system will feed into the MDM. And Allegiant is our fourth partner. They are actually going to come in and do the installation of electric and water meters. So they're the ones that actually come in and do the hands-on work of installing everything. Because remember, we got to keep the business running while all this is happening. So the meter readers got to still need to go out and read those meters. So the meters will still have a digital display on them uh, uh, so that the while we're, because once we get stuff in, then the business has to continue. So we keep reading meters like we did. Like I told you, it's a three-year project. And then, um, and then we test and test and test. And then once we're happy, then we flip the switch and we go live. Or in, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to do what we call a, a initial deployment area, IDA. It's like a pilot. You know, we're going to do about 3,000 uh, water meters and 3,000 electric meters in different parts of town. Mm -hmm. And um, here's the map of the IDA. You can see it's, it's colored areas. So kind of on the north side. And then the very uh, extreme of Southmost. And one of the reasons we chose that is because we, we try to pick areas where we have problems. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't do any good for me to go pick the perfect, you know, the perfect mm -hmm. house and test that. Because I know that's going to work. You know, we need to go test the areas where we might have issues. So we try to pick the extremes because of the communication issues. Like at the very south, we can't even get phone signals over there. 
even though the waters are cellular, it, it's a different cellular system than your phone system. So it's, 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 uh, they've guaranteed us it'll work, but we're going to test it anyway. And, uh, and then there's, you can't really see it on this map, but there, we're also doing downtown, like uh, uh, Elizabeth, Adams, Washington, Jefferson. Uh, the downtown area, it's very dense, alleys. Uh, I was walking through there yesterday, and it's steel lids everywhere, which we can't, we have to remove those and get rid of them because the six went through steel. But uh, we picked the areas that we thought might be problematic, and that's what we're going to use as our test area. And uh, we'll do the test area for probably about three to four months. We're hoping to start the, the test, uh, the IDA, I want to say like in April or May. Right now, one of our biggest concerns is just getting product. Uh, and that's why we're trying to get the contract signed and executed because on the, on the water meter side, it's about 26 weeks lead time. On the electric meter side, it's 52 weeks, which is one year lead time. So it takes, it takes a while. But we tried to get enough up front to where we can do the IDA. So while we have those orders pending, we can be doing the testing and integrating all the software packages that I talked about. And this is a lot of detail that you don't really need to know. Long story, it, basically what this is telling you is that we worked on this a, a long time. Uh, we started all the legal work on the contracts back in January. We finally got them done. Oh, and then we took them to the, uh, to the board at the beginning of this month. So basically we had a baby. It took us nine months to, to get just the contracting for all this done. Um, and this is the budget. This is what uh, an overview of the budget looks like. Uh, again, the major vendors are Landis and Gear, Badger, Allegiant, SmartWorks. Esource is the uh, consulting company that, that's been helping us through this entire process. Really, they've worked with us for 10 years. About 10 years ago, we we was our first shot at AMI, and, and we uh, much like the IDA, we did a pilot area. Um, it was successful, but at that point in time, the board decided that it was uh, uh, financially, it was this project or a different project, and they chose to put this one on the back burner and do a different project. So um, uh, when this came back up about two or three years ago, we hired uh, eSource to come back. They knew us. They knew what we wanted to do. And uh, our consultant on the project. So they also work with staff. Uh, all the process development and organizational change that I was telling you about, they're the ones that help lead all that because we're not experts in that stuff and we haven't done this full, uh, full force before. So they help us with that. And then Spencer Fain are our attorneys that helped us with the contracting. And then of course we have other interfaces that will pop up that, that we put in there. And then we have some contingency funds that, that we scheduled in here. And here's the contract. I mean, here's the project schedule. Again, it's about three years. Um, so, like I said, we're about a month behind because the contracting took us. Uh, we switched attorney. Uh, we, we switched firms midway, which is never a good thing. Uh, so the new firm had to start over from scratch. They worked with the old firm to kind of bring them up to speed. And then we, but it, it, that delay cost us a couple of months, but we're, we're moving forward and everything's going well. Any questions? Here's, here's part of the downtown deployment area. This shows you, it's that circle in red. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll give you a better idea of, what, of the area we're going to work in downtown. This is the southmost area. This is way south um, that we're looking at. And there it's because we have communication issues. So that's why we wanted to hit that area. And then this is, uh, uh, you can see the red circles there. Uh, this is in the Price and Ruben Torres. And if you look at the, oh, I, sh I should have told you this earlier, if you look on the right-hand side, it'll, it'll give you a list of some of the things that we're going to hit over there. Like in this case, apartment complexes uh, that have both water and electric services, uh, La Mansión uh, de Paseo and La Residencia Apartments. So mm -hmm. we, can, we can look at different things. Like over here in the southmost area, we also have, uh, I believe there were a couple of schools in there, um, Palm Grove. And uh, over here in downtown, we have Pute Nat Elementary School, uh, Bank, IBC Bank, Texas State Bank. So we were trying to get some residential, some commercial, again, also different types of customers that we're going to have to deal with to give us, if, if there's going to be a problem, we want to know about it early because yeah. there's always a problem. Yeah. It's just how you deal with it. And then this, the last area was uh, West Alton Glore. 
Um, there's, a, there's five schools out there, East Uturia, Stillman, Keller, and Anzano. So, so any questions? Okay, Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Okay, so moving on um, to our next item for public comments. Is there anybody here with public comments? Okay. Okay, so uh, the next meeting is going to be on November the 5th, 2023. For that one, um, I would just like to just double check with everyone. I know uh, we start going out of town around that time. So if uh, uh, we've been able to move it in the past, so if there's any. Um, I should be here. Um, you should be going to be here. All right. The 15th. I should be here. Right. Be here. Then we'll keep it for that day. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, so that go ahead. Uh, that that goes, and we uh, go ahead and conclude our meeting. And um, if I can have a motion to adjourn. Okay, so that is motion carried. That concludes our meeting. Thank you so much for being here, um, and we will see you all next month. Our meetings adjourned.